So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rob Hunter here and today I would like to do again a little bit of uh, biology. I would like to show you uh, this very interesting structure under the microscope. This is a sperm factory. <laughs> yes, uh, we are looking here at the cross section of the testicles of a mouse and uh, in a mouse testicle just like in the testicles of all mammals there are many of those round structures that you see here and these round structures are cross sections of the so-called seminiferous tubules and uh, today in this video we are going to have a very close look at uh, those seminiferous tubules and I'd like to explain to you how sperm cells which are can which can be found here in the center of the seminiferous tubule how sperm cells are made and uh, yeah when you actually look at uh, one of those uh, seminiferous tubules here then you can see that there are many of those circles here in the wall and those circles each circle here is a cell of course and the sperm cells in the center are significantly smaller and all of those lines that you see here uh, these are actually the tails of the sperm cells um, so in the head of the sperm cells I think must be somewhere over here those dark dots here and you see that they're significantly smaller than the cells um, of the wall of the seminiferous tubule here well the testes or the testicles are responsible not only for making sperm cells but also for producing hormones and uh, for this reason I'm also going to show you um, yeah then a little bit uh, later I'm going to explain to those cells that can be found outside of the seminiferous tubule here because they are responsible for making the hormone testosterone but let's go back here um, again and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because um, I can't zoom in more I'm already at the maximum uh, level that's possible here uh, but I think that's going to be fine so what we're going to do is I'm going to step you through the process of spermatogenesis uh, now which is the making of those sperm cells and what we're doing is we're starting here right on the outside here of the seminiferous tubule and this uh, layer outside here is uh, referred to as the basement membrane and it kind of holds the whole seminiferous tubule together. Um, there are also some layers right beneath uh, the basement membrane and these are called germinal epithelium cells. Those germinal epithelium cells are supportive cells and um, however the cells out of which the sperm cells are made are called spermatogonia and they're yet further in here and uh, just by looking at those cells here it's kind of difficult if not impossible to differentiate them but the spermatogonia are yeah, further inwards here beneath the germinal epithelium. And those uh, spermatogonia will now divide. And as a matter of fact, as we, uh, we make uh, um, the, the sperm cells here, um, cells will divide uh, in the process of a meiosis. Meiosis is uh, the making of sperm, is required to, to make sperm and also egg cells because during meiosis, we are making uh, four, um, four sperm cells in here and we are also reducing the DNA of the cells. And the reduction of the DNA, the half of the DNA, the halving of the DNA, basically by cutting it in half, <laughs> that's what I wanted to say, by halving the DNA we are um, making sure that uh, during fertilization when we add um, all the DNA from the egg cell that we're then uh, getting again the full set of chromosomes and otherwise if we were not to reduce the DNA at the beginning then the DNA in the offspring would increase more and more and that's of course something that uh, we don't want. So but let's uh, now go here back uh, to the wall of the seminiferous tubule here and let's look at some of those spermatogonia here. They will divide once um, and uh, no they will not divide once yet they will first form the so-called primary spermatocytes. And those primary spermatocytes, they are the cells that will now divide. Yeah? You see, this is a process of, of cell differentiation that's going on step by step. Um, so the spermatogonia form the so-called primary spermatocytes and they will divide once to form two cells, which will divide a second time to form a total of four cells. And those four cells are then found in the inside here um, of the seminiferous tubule. Yeah? It's a little bit, too, yeah, let's go back to this one over here. So there must be then four cells over here and those four cells are referred to as the spermatids. And those spermatids, um, they basically have half of the DNA, but they do not have a tail yet. So what we need to do now is we somehow need to grow a tail. And in order to show you how the cells, uh, the spermatids grow a tail, I go to a different one because there are different ones where it's better visible. I've seen some um, some cross sections yeah I think that these, that's much better you see that some of those cells here are not quite round but quite long here okay 
Um, and those cells are referred to as nurse cells or Sertoli cells. And these nurse and Sertoli cells are important for forming uh, the tails of the sperm cells. So um, yeah, here they're yeah, maybe it's also a bit a little bit difficult to see. Could be those here. And what happens is that the spermatids without a tail, they will um, associate and uh, go to uh, and stick to the Sertoli cells. And uh, as they associate to the Sertoli cells and as they bind to them, um, then the sperm cells, the spermatids will grow a tail. And these uh, spermatids are then, yeah, more mature and they are referred to them as spermatozoa. Wow, so we've got a, we're going from the spermatogonia, we're going from the spermatogonia to a primary spermatocyte, then uh, we have a secondary spermatocyte, uh, yeah, and then we have the spermatids, and the spermatids become a spermatozoa. Uh, I love it when scientists and biologists, when they always invent new terms, because uh, that's important actually, otherwise we don't know what we're talking about. Oh, this is a, this is a nice one really. Look, look at this here. Yeah, see, uh, all of those flat little, structures here, these seem to be the heads of, of the sperm, sperm cells. Yeah, and the long tails stretching inwards. And what happens now is, is that they will break off, um, they will detach, and then they're carried away. Um, they are not able to move yet, those tails, uh, but uh, they will continue to mature, and then they will also start moving and, and start beating so that they're able to swim on their own. Yeah? Also, I think this is actually a much nicer cross-section. You can see the individual cells uh, much better. Yeah, and the basement membrane on the outside, then the germinal epithelium layer, spermatogonia, which will then form somewhere over here, the primary spermatocytes, the spermat they divide, then you have the secondary spermatocytes, and then divide again, and then they have the spermatids, which will then form the spermatozoa with the help of the Sertoli cells. <laughs> oh wow, it's almost like a tongue twister a little bit, <laughs> all of those terms, um, and uh, yeah. But I think maybe maybe those words are not so important. Uh, I just uh, wanted to explain to you how the process is, but uh, sometimes it is good if, if uh, those processes and if those uh, structures all have a name, because then you actually know what you're talking about. Ah, I also promised you to talk a little bit about those cells that can be found outside of the seminiferous tubules, those cells over here. I I think there could also be some blood vessels hidden in here somewhere. Maybe that's the reason why it's so red. Um, but those cells between the uh, between the seminiferous tubules are referred to as uh, the so-called the um, interstitial cells, or also known as lydic cells, interstitial or lydic cells, and uh, they are responsible for producing testosterone, which is of course a hormone, because after all, the testes are responsible for producing not only sperm cells. Yeah, which can be found in here, but also the hormone testosterone, uh, which is produced also in the testes, but between the seminiferous tubules. Yeah? So you see um, different regions um, yeah, have, of course, different responsibilities uh, and uh, they're specialized to, to do different things here. Yeah, and uh, what I'm going to do now again is I'm going to zoom out uh, quite a bit here to give you a better overview, of course, I always have to adjust a little bit the light intensity here, simply to show you how many different seminiferous tubules that there are, <laughs> quite a few of them. Um, I don't know how, what the total length of those is, but I can imagine them to be quite long. Uh, and uh, simply by looking at this now with all of those seminiferous tubules here, I think it becomes more understandable while, why or how um, a body is able to produce millions and millions and millions of sperm cells every day. You've got so many of these seminiferous tubules actively working um, and producing uh, those spermatozoa. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think uh, in, if you're interested in these type of anatomy videos and histology videos, and I've got a few more on this channel uh, that you might be interested in. Otherwise, of course, I would like to also invite you to subscribe to this channel if you like these videos. Leave your comments uh, in the comments section below. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you around next time. Happy microbe hunting as always, and bye-bye. Uh,